pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to a brand new series of They Think It's All Over. It's been a year, and to be honest, when we asked David and Gary if they were up for another series, they told us they were far too busy. But, as luck would have it, Channel 4 nicked the cricket from the BBC, and Walker's Crisps binned Gary in favour of Michael <laughs> Owen. <laughs> so, will you welcome back David Gower and Gary Lineker. We would have had a full set, but sadly Lee Hurst couldn't get parole. <laughs> In his chair this week is yet another curly-haired Arsenal fan. In Lee! Fact, it's Alan Davis. <laughs> and sitting on David's left hand is a member of France's World Cup winning side, who was born in Marseille, but now plays for Chelsea. So he's the nearest thing they have to a local boy. Frank <laughs> Lebert. And with Gary and Rory as a comedian and playwright whose first play, An Evening with Gary Lineker, actually came true last time he appeared on this show. His most recent play, My Summer with Des, also came true when he donned a red wig and a dress and posed for the news of the world. <laughs> Arthur Smith. We start the new series by asking the teams to explain what lies behind a pair of goal celebrations. David, Allen and Frank, we take you back to West Ham's encounter with Southampton in September. West Ham have got plenty forward. It's Pierce with the nod down. Ian Wright! <laughs> I'm a Chelsea, so you know I don't know anything about the east of London. And, uh, or football. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the moment, the plus je dire, uh, pour commencer, que c'est un grand honneur de t'avoir ici dans mistake. le show, Monsieur Leboeuf. Thank you very much. What I was saying there was, have you had any language difficulties at Chelsea? Have you taught Dennis Wise any English yet? <laughs> Frank, you know, is Leboeuf and onion, is that a new flavour of Walker's Crisp? <laughs> Gary, you've lost the job. <laughs> You let me yesterday's man some shine. The thing is, Gary, I was talking to Gary earlier on, he's very upset because one person here has got a World Cup winner's medal. Mm. Yeah. And That's one it. person here hasn't. I've got one myself, by the way, Franz Beckenbauer. I burgled him in 82. <laughs> Did you ever win the Cricket World Cup, David? I've played in the World Did Cup. You I, I the played cricket... <laughs> Did you I ever win the Cricket... Did you ever win the Cricket World Cup? I played in the World Cup final and scored as many as Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Un moment, euh, mesdames, messieurs. <laughs> Sérieusement, euh, Franck. Oui. Franck. Franck. <laughs> je vois que tu es, euh, que tu as la tête de slap. Avez-vous essayé Ronsil quick drying wood stain? <laughs> Stain de bois qui oh, sèche oui. vite et fait exactement. Oh, okay. <laughs> could I, could I, sorry, uh, just disturb sorry, you for I'm a moment so we could maybe answer one of the questions? I'm just a little bit oh, yeah. distracted because there's a bag of. I think Lee's left a load of gear behind. Has he? <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what he goes home on the it's tube in. Gotta say, it was mine. That was a bit of a turn up, what, I wasn't expecting it. Was <laughs> Well, this is the weirdest one. Look at that. <laughs> Come on, what about the question? What about oh, it? I thought he was staggering what? around slightly drunkenly because he's after a move to Middlesbrough and he thought he might impress Robson, who will... <laughs> <laughs> now, it's yeah. nothing to do with that. It's to do with that ref, the uh, Di Canio ref who got shoved out of Frank knows. <laughs> I'll call. I'll call. I'll call. Yeah. In French, it's too late testicule. I'll call. Too penis. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think you probably get three points for that. But no here problem. are Ian Wright and Neil Ruddock to tell their story. It was just original stuff. Never seen it anywhere before. We just made it up. You're joking, aren't you? I thought he was trying to piss out that ref. That the canny old push. Yeah, we... No? Yeah, we was, because he, he did go down like a sack of spuds. He should have got for it, really. It was, it was the worst dive I've ever seen. 
I'm glad that we condone what yeah. Decanio done because it was right out of order, wasn't it? I think Hale and Pace are safe, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ian right there, seconds away from avoiding yet another FA charge, but I hope the FA won't get cross because it was only a bit of fun, wasn't it, lads? It was we didn't get charged, we done it for a bit of fun. It was a Rory McGrath, wasn't it? it was <laughs> 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 What's about him? Oh, Paul Alcock. <laughs> <laughs> The incident with Di Canio was actually the third time Paul Alcock has ended up on his back thanks to a footballer, putting him second to Danny Bear on the all-time list. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, Rory and Arthur, for you, we go back to Manchester United's disastrous 5-3 win over Chelsea in the FA Cup <laughs> <laughs> earlier this year. Tom now, can we get past the bar? Sheringham and David Beckham. A tap in in the end. So, Gary's team, why was oh. David Beckham? Qu'est-ce qu'il se passe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Andy Cole, il va par ici, il va par là. <laughs> tu, tu es là debout comme un uh, strict long de piste paralyse. <laughs> Qu'est-ce qu'il oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's a hardcore folk singer. <laughs> so be it. Yeah, you get four fingers in each ear. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing about um, Posh Spice and what's he called? Beckham. Beckham, David Beckham. <laughs> Is it Smokey be, Beckham? They've never been interviewed together, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it. Yeah, yeah, you've lost <laughs> it. <laughs> the no, it doesn't work. Gary's remark got a laugh and threw Rory slightly off his trail. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> a lot of people enjoyed that. <laughs> Posh Spice especially, I imagine. Posh yeah. Spice and they were Gary, never, just, never no. interviewed together. Why? Because they only have one voice between them. I both talk like that, you know. Every time I've been a little girl, I want to sing and dance. And she says similar things as well. <laughs> We know this. Yeah. Uh, they may have been making some satirical remarks about, about the nature of the sexual attractive. relationship. They're jealous because yeah. he's so attractive. I'll okay. give you three points for that. The answer is indeed that he was mocking the silence of the Chelsea fans who a moment ago had been singing a song about his fiancée, Posh Spice. But what were the Chelsea fans <laughs> singing to upset him so? <laughs> David Beckham, David Beckham, do you take her up the arse? So it was indeed just a polite inquiry as to whether or not David and his fiancée had ever visited Highbury together. So that's <laughs> that one. When England were on tour in Moldova, Beckham read a book from cover to cover, the first time he'd ever done so on a foreign trip. He was so moved that he was in tears as the book reached its dramatic climax, as Jill came tumbling after. <laughs> At the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team indeed have three points. David, catch. There you go, that's the last bit of cricket you'll see on the BBC this year. <laughs> the next round is Sporting Bluff, where each team member reads a statement, one of them is true and two of them are false. The other side has to decide which is the truth teller and who's about as convincing as a Paul Olcock stumble. David's team, your subject is boxing's sanest earbiter, Mike Tyson. Here is Mike Tyson in training, limbering up for a date. <laughs> Mike Tyson is a breeder of pigeons. Mm -hmm. Gary? Mike Tyson is a collector of beer mats. Rory? Do you know the French for beer mat, Rory? I doubt it. <laughs> I think, in typical cowardly French way, they've chosen our word, le beer mat. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him I won the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. I won the World Cup. Yeah. How much is three feet in metres? Like we give a f <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson once trained to be a hairdresser. OK, so David's team, Mike Tyson fancies pigeons, collects coloured bits of cardboard, or provides the finest short back and sides this side of the Mississippi. I don't think he's not remotely interested in beer as far as I know. He likes a slow, comfortable screw against the wall, whether you like it or not. That's it. <laughs> I knew we could take this programme up, market. <laughs> Well, I'll try. These beer mat things, are they like sort of cheap coasters, you know, sort of stuff? That's right. Genuinely, yeah. <laughs> 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 doesn't know what beer is. <laughs> 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 
a man of the people, a man of the people. <laughs> so they're sort, of, they're sort of sort of round things you put on a yeah. table to soak up alcohol. That's a bit, right, like, a bit right. like sort of gazer, that sort of thing. <laughs> That's for the hairdressing, I can't believe that for a second. You want well, Tyson holding the mirror up behind you going, do you like it? <laughs> Pigeons do also have metal tags around their ankles, so he's got that in common with him. Maybe. <laughs> Pigeon fancier, beer mat collector, barber. I think it's something to do with pigeons. They've got pigeon. approximately the same IQ as Don King. Pigeon. 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 You reckon pigeon? Let's see if you were right. <laughs> I'll give you three points for that. Arthur was indeed telling the truth. Mike Tyson is a pigeon fancier. In fact, he spent many years breeding pigeons. It's the only time in his life that a bird comes back willingly. <laughs> Gary's team, we hark back to that dim and distant time long, long ago when England had a popular football manager, way back in June. Here are Paul Gascoigne and Ian Walker, showing Glenn Hoddle why they deserve to be left out of his World Cup squad. A tough week for Walker. Real chance here for Gascoigne. They moved up and got caught. Still Gascoigne. Still Gascoigne. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's still Gascoigne. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but when Glenn invited the sack players into his hotel room to be told the fateful news, he had a plan to calm their nerves. David's team, what was that plan? It was to calm his nerves of the players. Glenn Odell put on the CD of him. No, in uh, English, in English, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Oh. I won the World Cup. That's right. <laughs> to calm the nerves of the players, Glenn Hoddle put on a CD of Kenny G. <laughs> <laughs> to calm the nerves of the players, Glenn Hoddle put on a CD of Celine Dion. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be that, can it? <laughs> so, were the soon to be discarded players relaxing to hymns, Kenny G or Celine Dion, Gary's team? Are you sure he didn't put on Come on Eileen? <laughs> Come oh, on Eileen. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Imagine him in the dungarees, that'd be an away kit next to you, Chelsea. <laughs> You've got, got quite a good sort of pop history throughout something. No. 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 <laughs> they won the World Cup, so they're not yeah. too Exactly. Yeah. Interesting about the French language. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. They, they haven't got a word for car. They have to say voiture. <laughs> <laughs> I know oh, how to make gosh. any Frenchman laugh. Go on, then. I know how to make any French laugh. I'm going to say something to Frank, and he will, as a Frenchman, find it hilarious. If he doesn't, I give all of you a hundred pounds. It is, doesn't sound much, but to a Frenchman it's very amusing, because a French cock says coquericot, but an English cock says cock-a-doodle-doo. <laughs> it's quite a quiet lap he's got, isn't it? <laughs> It looks a bit like a frown. <laughs> if you're in the Latin quarter saying that in French, they'd be pissing at What about you? Which part of France have you been? I have been Albania. in France. Albania. Yeah. <laughs> Let's picture the scene. He's telling the players that they're going to be dropped. He's got to play something relaxed. What's he going to play? To be honest, I've never really heard of Kenny G. I mean, can you name yeah, a Kenny G song? Very lucky. It's shagging music, basically, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> You shag. Well, that's not what you want before announcing the team. It's not going to be he doesn't want to put on shaggy music if he's got Dion Dublin in the hotel room with him, but what I've heard. And what have you heard, Alan? I've heard that he's got an enormous knob. <laughs> Frank, out of, out of Petit and Vieira and Anelka, who's got the biggest knob? Uh, That's just something that a couple of girls, really friends of mine, want to know. Do you want to know? Yeah, really write it down know? on there and I'll tell her you when tell I'm tell him but he can't speak with his mouth full. <laughs> we have to say... <laughs> drawing of it. <laughs> From what I understand, Kenny G is sort of a bland, uninteresting kind of music. <laughs> and Glenn Hoddle, uh, you know, so I vote for Kenny G. All right. Who said Kenny G? You, David said Kenny G. And 
years to it. Well done. So that's three points to you. David Garrett did indeed speak the truth. So let's all relax now and hear some of the smooth sounds of that mellow Kenny G sax. <laughs> David, oh. you're fired. <laughs> It sounds like the inside of a harvester. They're all <laughs> <laughs> I won't hear a word said against harvesters. Why not? I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have six, and indeed, Gary's team have six. In this next round, we play some unusual sporting footage and then ask what's going on. Gary's team, feast your eyes on this. You're bringing out Rory to lunch. <laughs> I think he looked like the Queen Mother to me. <laughs> which one? <laughs> I mean, which Queen Mother? <laughs> It may, may have been the traditional parading of Gaza's liver. Rory <laughs> <laughs> McGrath, you must have some Scottish blood in you, Rory. Don't you know something about this? No, no, not at all. No. I was Irish. I, I had a bit of a Frenchman in me once. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't before this show, was it? It was uh, um, for Jesus. <laughs> Do you remember when um, Des Lynham said, did <laughs> someone tell you this, Frank? Des Lynham said, and there's. Frank LeBeuf with his little son, Le Spare Rib. <laughs> I will ignore you. <laughs> I know, you've won the bloody World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won it once, you know. You, know. you, are, seeing, across the you are seeing on this programme, Frank, Frank LeBeuf is turning into Alan Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I won the World Cup! <laughs> you've been relegated. I won the World Cup! <laughs> you shit! I won the World Cup! <laughs> yeah, but I won the World Cup. Yeah, I <laughs> I think they weren't Scottish, I think they were Cornish. That was a Cornish pasty, Kidiogi as they called them in Cornwall. The best one's made by the Patrice Bakery. I'll be there at Christmas there. <laughs> yes, that's three points. The answer is those are Cornish fans and that's the giant Cornish pasty. It's a tradition dating back to 1908 that whenever Cornwall make it through to Rugby Union's County Championship final, their supporters wear kilts and tie a giant pasty to the crossbar. Not many people are aware that kilts are worn by Cornish rugby fans as well as Scots. It's nothing to do with Celtic tradition, it just makes it easier to display their arses out of the <coughs> coach window. <laughs> David's team, believe it or not, this is part of a sports event. <laughs> so... What we want to know is, what sporting event was that a part of, and what did all those giants and bits of giants symbolise? One point. I don't part. actually know for sure, but I'm certain that Stuart Hall will be absolutely pissing himself. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't a, a porno festival more, I don't know. A porno festival? Yeah. It could have been. Yeah. What sort of porn are you into? <laughs> uh, and I'll snug Nous avons, uh, avons une star de porno, Emmanuel Petit. <laughs> He's quick, he's French, his name of Bono Flick. Yeah. Manuel, <laughs> Manuel. He's quick, he's French. Well done, Roy. <laughs> and the French have no word for baguette. <laughs> Another word for stupid. Yeah. Come on, it's a part of a sporting it event, was France, what is the event, it? what's it simply? There was a big pink nose in the middle of it that I'm certain was something to do with Brian Clough. No. I always that or Carl Malden. No. <laughs> doesn't remind me uh, a nose, you know. Doesn't oh, yeah? It? No. What's it remind you of? And if you say, say, I, I talk about the porn, uh, porn yeah. festival. Yeah, no, no, but I want to know if that reminds you of that. Why is the green things growing out the bottom? You've got a problem, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Frank knows this. You know this, Frank, don't you? Yeah, it was in France. It was. The last, uh, the last World Cup, you know, we, we saw the giants, you know, who yeah. represented the. Uh, all uh, continent, four continents. We had four giants. It was really boring. They were really slow. They said that the giants represented the four corners of the world, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Do you do geography in France still? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you three points for that. Well done. Very, very, very good. The four giants were Poe, the Asian, Romeo, the European, Pablo, the Amerindian, 
and Moussar the African, who was trying to sell beads down the Champs Elysees when he was arrested by giant riot police and deported. <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. <laughs> and it's time now to witness a pair of blindfolded men blundering about in the dark with their arms outstretched as they attempt to identify top sporting personality in Field of Sportsmen. David and Alan, you're first, if you'd like to take your positions. You have 90 seconds to work out who has been brought before you. Or if you're Alex Ferguson, eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> Your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> no point oh, hitting Christ. him, David doesn't go down. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> um. What? Oh! Who's that? Someone hit me. Is that you? I think it's. Well, it doesn't feel like we... a very muscly arm. I think it might be a lady. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I say it. You're not the one. Oh! <laughs> You're not the one in Belted Barrymore, are you? You're that. One. Hang on. It's a female you know? boxer, in uh, my estimation, and I've got You're a minute right. and a half to work out which one have I, I given mean, I can't see How many face. are there? <laughs> That's it's a great the game, isn't it? Game. Right. So I've got boxing gloves, I've been punching the head twice, <laughs> and now, oh, no! <laughs> Oh, how many there are many around, are there? Does it rhyme with... I'm going to bite her on the ear. It does, it does. <laughs> right, rhymes, rhymes with out. Oh, couch! Yes, well done. Thank Three you. points. Thank you very much. Yeah. Couch. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Three points. <laughs> Three points, excellent. Gary and Rory. Ça gaz funk. Ça va et toi? Ça fait de la chanté, oui. Boring, isn't it? Okay, for you, yes. You got that John McEnroe from behind the crowd, did you know that? And can we have our second mystery guest, please? Them, isn't it? <laughs> Your 90 seconds start now. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I'll start. Oh, hello, what's this? That's another girl box. Uh. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. It's, not. It, it's, it's Fatima Whitbread. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. Oh, blimey, it's solid. <laughs> it's not you, Bank, is it? <laughs> oh, no, it's not. It have not said anything. How can it be you, Ben? <laughs> Middleweight, Nigel Ben. Correct. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> This is unheard of. At this point in the competition, they've both got maximum points. David's team have 12 <coughs> points and Gary's team have 12 points. <laughs> we end, as always, with our ref pushing pasty tying name game. David's team go first. Could you pass those along to Alan, please, Frank? Thank you very much. <coughs> you have 90 seconds to get as many names as you can. And your time starts <coughs> now. Uh, American sprinter, long fingernails dead. <laughs> Australian cricket captain, he's a friend of Scott. Yeah. Uh, French porno star, plays for Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hands on in the England dressing room. Uh, uh, referee got pushed over. Oh, sorry, two penny. Uh, Formula One driver from Finland, uh, McLaren. Uh, Mega Hackman. Uh, English amateur who turned pro, playing golf. 
There we oh, go. Rose. Yeah, Rose. that's it, yeah. Um, He's a difficult one. French player, played in the Stop World Cup with again. a girl's name. <laughs> played right back, brilliant. Plays for Palmer. Ah, uh, uh, Lilian Turan. Mm. Uh, okay. Chicago Bulls uh, basketball star, Nike. Uh, Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cricket umpire. Um, his surname is Rhymes Lamb Cigarettes. Has given David out almost certainly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a sprinter who I've never heard of, so you probably won't either. But he's got two syllables in his first name. First one's on the end of your foot. Toe? Yeah. Imagine the name that began with toe. Toe rag. Toe rag, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Press, you know, things you buy come in a. Who was it? Toby Box. I'm sorry, Toby Box, but I haven't yet heard of you. <laughs> so, well done. David's team move on to 22, which means oh, okay. Gary's team, you need 10 to draw level and 11 to win. Can you pass those down to Rory, please? Gary's Arthur. whinging already because he thought those were far too easy. Oh, he's oh, always whinging. Right. You know what he's like. Yeah, okay. The fourth or fifth of our... 10 to draw, 11 to win. Rory, 90 seconds. Start now. Go. Brazilian player didn't play in the final. Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yeah, Ronaldo. Ronaldo. <laughs> English, England's best tennis player, player still crap. Cliff Richard. <laughs> Tim Henman, correct. <laughs> uh, Liverpool striker advertises crisps rather well, I think. My <laughs> he won't sell as many crisps as I did. <laughs> you, don't, you don't sell any crisps anymore, <laughs> uh, Australian tennis player um, on the roof, big thing. Pat Rafter. Yes. Um, Ear missing, not Van Gogh. Uh, boxer. Tyson, Mike Tyson. Not Mike Tyson. Like Tyson. Bit his Holy ear off. <laughs> um, Alcock falls over, pushed by. Di Canio. Paolo. Uh, this is, I don't know who this Di is. Di Paolo. This is someone whose first name is, you know, what you smell. Oh, smell, it? smell, smell. smell. Odor. No, no. Abbreviation. Smurf. Body odor. Theo. Theo. Yeah. Bo uh, what do you have at uh, McDonald's? Nothing. Chris. Hamburger. 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 Second name Brooking. Trevor Trev Brooking. <laughs> no, yeah. So, Trevor. <laughs> second name Wimbledon. Jack. Wimbledon. Little fairy creatures. Don. Trevor uh, Don. Fairy <laughs> <laughs> Wimble. Wimble. Trevor Wimble. Um, <laughs> first name. First name. Uh, Irish for John. Sean. Correct. Uh, <laughs> Well, Scottish, Scottish, Scottish surname. What a Scottish surname to begin with. Muck. Muck. Yeah, Muck. and when you go skimming along. <laughs> Muck skimming! Muck skimming, yeah, very good. Um, oh my oh. word! <laughs> yes, good one. I'm glad that wasn't a tie because that was a very dubious one at the end. But in fact, Gary's team have 21, but this week's winners no. were 22 <laughs> are David's team. <laughs> Close. So our thanks to Gary, Rory and Arthur, David, Alan and Frank. We're all off to take posh spice up the arsenal. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. <laughs> Stay with us here on BBC One. Les Ferdinand, Phil Tufnell and Jana Novotna are on side with John Inverdale. Next. 